Howdy folks, Grok the Duck Farmer here, and let's talk mod in Minecraft with the spotlight for the Schematica mod. And I love the Schematica mod. Uh, you can see an example of a, a build behind me. Uh, this is the MC Noodler's uh, Jungle Temple, and it's a fantastic building, and it's sitting there kind of ghostly because it's not really in the world. This is just the Schematica mod showing where it is. And I love being able to use that to inspire me for really cool looking builds. Now, to get the Schematica mod, because most mod packs do not come with it, uh, I've got a link down in the, the description that has the Schematica mod uh, where you can download it. Uh, you need to make sure that you have modded Minecraft, because, you know, this isn't a vanilla thing. Uh, you also need to grab the Lunatrius Core, and that's linked in the, the description as well. Uh, go ahead and grab the, the same versions for whichever version of Minecraft you're running. Uh, right now I'm running 1.12.2, but there's lots and lots of different versions of it for whatever you need. And uh, get that uh, those uh, two jar files installed into your mod folder in whatever build of Minecraft you're using. And then when you start up Minecraft, you should be good to go. You should have it there. Uh, in fact, if you hit the escape key, take a look at your mods, sort, and do schematica, I've got it installed. And the other one is the Lunatrius Core. Lunatrius Core, there it is. You need to make sure that they have the same version and you're good to go. Now, there are some key bindings, and by default, the, you're going to use three. And they're on the number pad, if you've, your keyboard has that. Uh, it's the, the, the forward slash, the asterisk, and the minus. And we'll talk about what, what they can do. Now, one of the, the first things that you're, you're wanting to do is probably make a schematic of something. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this real quick. Goodbye. Uh, what you wanna do is, is have something you wanna take a snapshot of, a schematic of. And if we take a look here, I've got a base that I built. Uh, there's a tower over here, I call it the clock tower. This is done by Madness64, although I did add the uh, windmill on there. And over here is a tree stump that I made a long time ago and I loved it. So I said, okay, let me grab a schematic of it so that I could have it for later because then I used it again in another series because, you know, yay, fun. So once you have something that you, you want to keep, then what you need to do is define the, the boundaries for it. So what I often will do is I'll find the bottommost corner and it looks like it's about over here. Do, 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 do. It, go away, you. Do, 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 do. And there it is. So I will come here to the bottommost corner and you know stand on this block. And this is where I use the asterisk key on the, the keyboard. And this brings up red points and blue points. So I'm going to go ahead and define the red point right here. And turn it on so I can see it. And you can see this block is floating over here. Let's move it down one. And then I always move it the wrong direction. Oh, got it right that time. So it's highlighting this block in the bottom most corner. Then I tend to go over to the opposite corner. And that's about here. Actually, that looks one little bit wider. Okay. Boop, 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 boop. And right there. So this is the opposite corner. And I'm going to define the blue point. Again, I hit the asterisk key, hit the blue point. And let's see, let's bump it over here. There we go. And then it needs to go up a bunch, but I really can't see it. So this is where I go up higher. And this is going to define the opposite corners of the this bounding rectangle or cuboid or whatever. Uh, it's, it's one too high, but that really doesn't matter. So at this point, I can go ahead and save this, but then it's gonna have all these extra garbage blocks in here. So I, I tend to clean up the, the system as best I can and there we go let's clear all those perfect okay this is just what I want to save so let's go ahead and make a schematic of this so again with the asterisk down here is where you specify the the name of this and I'm just gonna call this you know temp um, temp oak <laughs> because it really doesn't matter I already have a backup of this I'll hit the save button 
escape out of here and it has saved nine chunks worth because <laughs> I built it across the chunks of of this schematic so if I come over now that I have a schematic I can use the forward slash key or the divide key depending on what you want to see and I can grab it and there it is yes I've got lots <laughs> uh, you select that and hit it and now it will pull in that schematic and you can see there's the original and here's the schematic that I just took of it and if we now that I've pulled it in I can use the third key which is the the, the minus key and this gives me the chance to move things around so I can sit there and uh, adjust it on the x-axis the z-axis as well as the y-axis to place it exactly where I want it to go. I can also sit there and rotate it around and it goes uh, clockwise. I can also flip it, which doesn't seem to be doing any, any good, which is fine. Um, you can also hide it and show it again. Uh, you can also say, hey, come right here <laughs> and move it right to where you are. Now, the, the nice things about this is it gives you an idea of where you can start building. So you can come in here and say, let's see, I want to put a block here there we go <laughs> angel blocks from extra utilities too are great because you can place them in the air if you happen to be in a void world like I am and in creative like I am you can also set blocks by going set block and then stone and it just set a, a stone block right there you can say okay now you can grab some grass let's grab some grass there's some grass and you can start building this and there you go and you can keep going and, and build this now one of the features that is on here and we click this let's look at we looked at these you can unload but that gets rid of everything you can also look at it per layer and you can see exactly what is there per layer or the whole thing uh, you also have a list of materials here's how much stuff is in this so there's 2100 oak woods uh, some dirt some grass some oak leaves some torches and one piece of glass because I have a hole right there <laughs> you can just barely see it past the torch uh, so I love being able to see how much stuff I need to build stuff also uh, there's this option down here the printer now I'm in creative in a single player world I can turn the printer on and it will just automatically start placing blocks for me which makes creating these things in a creative world very very nice and I, I do like that I really don't do this in single player uh, not single player but on, on a multiplayer server because to me this is kind of cheaty you know the, the the purpose of minecraft is to build things and if i have this do the building for me then am i building stuff not really no am i uh but uh here in this void world single player world i have no problems whatsoever to to build this uh check with your server administrators and see whether or not schematic is allowed on the server and if it is allowed whether or not you can use the printer function you know that different servers have different rules um, and and like I said for me it, it seems kind of cheaty to to do this rather than you know doing it um, you know by myself have I printed stuff out on on server multiplayer servers yes I have uh, but uh, typically because I've already built the thing multiple times and it, it I, I rarely do this especially for my big builds so anyway, this, this allows you to just build and design stuff uh, on the fly as you need. So let's go ahead and I'm going to unload this and it can go away because I don't need that anymore. Uh, you also have this uh, boundary um, that will stay for defining and you can uh, hit the uh, asterisk key and you can go off and it turns it off or, you know, whatever you need there. I'm going to turn it off again. Uh, this here and like these these other builds you know this was done by madness 64 i built this and designed it myself i did that one myself i have no problem with using these now we also were talking about uh, let's go ahead and grab that one again it was the mcnoodlers mcnoodles mc mcnoodlers uh, jungle temple uh, this one i did not build but he did publish a world download and so i went in there 
grabbed the the bounding copies and copied it because I loved the the look of that. And so I was thinking, okay, I would like to actually build that, but I'm not going to lay claim that this is my building because it's not. It's MC Noodlers. Uh, and so give credit where credit is due. You know, that's just the, the honest thing to do. Now, uh, talking about some of the, the functionality of this, when I'm setting up a build, and here's a corner of one right here, I will often uh, go in and I will grab the pagoda, in this case, my pagoda with the uh, quartz, and I will find, I will load it, place it exactly where I want it to go, and then I will find the block that I need to stand on for it to appear right. And you can see I, I stood right here and it merged in with that. That way, as I start building something, let me go in here and turn on layer. Uh, it, as I start building, I go, okay, I need to build this. And I was doing this uh, recently on my multiplayer server as a, a video. I went ahead and I had the schematic up and I was doing a third person um, video of me building it. I had the schematic up and I was going through and I was laying down the blocks on it. So this gave me an idea as to where I needed to put it, which made it much, much easier for, for me to do that. Now, let's talk colors because you can see this color here is that kind of ghostly blue. Let's turn on all the, the layers. And we've got some other colors here. We've got red, which says this is the wrong block. And if I break that, you can see it's supposed to be a fence. So that's not supposed to be there. This kind of purple color says there's a block where there should be air. And so, yep, that's supposed to be air there. And this orangey color says it's the right block, but it's in the wrong orientation. And stairs will do that all the time. So if we grab this, and you can see that's supposed to be down there. <laughs> Got to put it against something. <laughs> Red, wrong one. Uh, but you can see it, it's perfectly colored right now, and so it's the right thing. Wrong color. There we go. Purple means that it's supposed to be air, but that's in the, the correct location. Purple is supposed to be air. Orange, wrong color. So you get an idea as to how you lay things out. And so as you are going through putting things down, you can see that they appear um, again and again and again, and they look very nice. Very, very handy for, for building things. Now, one of the things that I use this a lot is to plan layouts. Uh, so if I unload this, let's say I'm doing some blood magic and I need one of those massive altars. So if I take a look at my stuff here, I want a blood magic altar six vanilla. And the vanilla is an important thing to put on your um, schematics when, when you put them, saying this is an actual bl vanilla build. Now, uh, looking at this, I've got granite here, redstone, uh, beacons, more redstone. Here we've got some glowstone, and that's some um, diorite. Now, all of these pieces here are pure vanilla pieces, and that's why I had the vanilla tag on there. But none of this is blood magic. This is just the location of where these pieces need to go. These are all runes. Uh, this is going to be a bloodstone brick. The glowstone is glowstone, and that's going to be the altar. And beacons are, you know, those are vanilla too. Uh, but this tells me where the stuff needs to be laid out. So if I'm going to put this someplace, I can figure out, okay, let's see, do I need to move it a little bit over here? Let's move it over there and down a little bit. I can get it placed exactly where I want it to go so that I can know that it's going to fit exactly where I want it to be. And, you know, you can see this is quite large. So having this here means I can I can see exactly what needs to, to go where and plan accordingly. And then I can start building the, the, the what's it. And if I don't have this, I can I can use cobble. It really doesn't matter. And then fill it in as I build my altar. And the reason why I say vanilla, if we go ahead and load this other uh, blood altar one. This one is a completely valid tier six blood altar. <laughs> but the problem is this was done in a completely different mod pack and textures change. Block IDs change over time. And because of this, 
the only things that stuck are the pure vanilla bits. <laughs> so the, the beacon, the glowstone, and the slabs. Everything else was modded textures in that mod pack. And so they, they vanished and, and they're no good. Which is why, also, I'm here in a vanilla world. Not a vanilla world. In a void world. This happens to be Feed the Beast Revelation as the pack right now. And when I wanted to build this and put that on, on my world, I started up a void world. I laid out a 3x3 three three grid. And I can blame MC Noodler for, for giving me inspiration on doing that. And there's an extra um, three chunks here because I wanted that ramp. So it's a 3x3 three three base in chunks. And then I sat down and I started building things. And I went through and said, okay, I like the walls. I like the, the variations on the walls. Once I got one wall done, I went ahead and did a schematic of that section so that I could repeat it on the other walls. And that way I could sit there and move it around very, very quickly so I didn't have to do all of it manually. Then I came in here and I said, okay, I want a base that's in here. Unfortunately, it's too wide. It's an even instead of an odd. But I decided this direction, I definitely wanted it to be odd, so that felt much better. And I started laying out things and building and, and figuring out what I needed. I came along to the side and I said, ooh, ooh, I like how this side works. And so I did a schematic of that chunk so I could move it around to the other side. And then I just continued and continued. And when this was all built in my void world in the single player, I went ahead and I played with the different textures of this. You know, I, I had this with a <laughs> creative. I had this with a dark oak and regular oak and I decided to stick with the spruce. I did put some trim of the dark oak because I figured, you know, it looked pretty good having that little bit of a difference. And then I went in there and I checked the board, everything. So I could do a huge amount of just messing with the build to figure out what I liked. And then I took the schematic of this entire section, these three by four chunks, and I went exploring to find where I could place this found a pretty good nice spot. It had kind of a hill, so I had to chew down the, the hill to get it gone. And then I knew what I wanted. I came over to the corner, found a spot where it, it placed it exactly where I wanted, put a cobblestone right there so I could find it. And then because I wanted to show off me building this, I went ahead and did the schematic, placed it there. And then I set up a pillar, a dirt pillar, about here <laughs> in in the the orientation on it and i went ahead and put some ladders up there so i could stand just right here looking i hit f3 and you can see that the line uh several down where it says facing north and it has some numbers you can see negative 136.3 slash 30.6 that's the exact direction i'm pointing so i went and i built some and I had the schematic up so I could see what needed to go where. And then I climbed back up the, the ladder, went here, and said, okay, it was 136.3, fiddly fiddly, and then whatever the other value was. Turned off that, took a screenshot, <laughs> and built some more. And so in my video, it you could see the building build. Did I use Schematica? Yes, to show what needed to go where. Did I use Schematica to, to print in all the stuff? No, because <laughs> in my opinion, that's kind of cheaty, uh, especially since I'm trying to produce videos for it. Anyway, so that's that's the way I use Schematica. It's very, very fun mod. Uh, one of the, the nice things is, is being able to find somebody that built something really cool, pull it in, take a look at it and say, ooh, I like how this is done. Why is the weather always changing here? All right, uh, and then, for example, let's go all the way down to W Wizard Tower. I found this out someplace, and there are, there are websites where you can find these schematics, and I thought this was a fantastic tower. Now, it happens to be a 2x2, two two, and I wanted something a little bit bigger. I, I really like the 3x3 three three size. It, it gives me a, a good amount of space for, for doing builds. So I said, I like 
how this was set up, and so I decided to try something very, very similar. Now if we swing in here, you can see there's there's places laid out by the, the, the guy that made this, and sadly I completely forgot who it was that, that made this, um, but I like the look of it. I like the, the sandstone idea, I thought that was really nice, but I didn't quite like the, the railings here of, of iron, I didn't like the oak, I decided to try something different, and so my materials were the sandstone for light and nether brick for the dark. And so then I said, let me, using this as an inspiration, let me set up a three by three and build it. I liked the four towers. I liked the, the, the multiple layers that are in here. Let's swing on in, uh, you know, where we've got these multiple layers. I liked that. And so I just expanded it out and used this as, as inspiration to build mine. And I really enjoyed it. So, you know, am I stealing this guy's placing in my world and calling it mine? No. But am I using this as inspiration for another build? Yes. And Schematica does that very, very nicely. And I really like how that uh, that works. And, you know, it was a very fun build. It took so much sandstone to build. Uh, but fortunately, I was able to buy in-game credit and buy the the vast bulk of that uh, sandstone just just the, the rules of the server because uh, I was also down below I was hollowing out huge amounts of space down below and that's what gave me the the in-game currency to buy all the sandstone and nether brick I needed <laughs> it was a fun fun build and that's the the, the fun thing about schematica it can inspire you to build some really good things. It also allows you to to help people out. Oh, speaking of helping people out, uh, one of the things that was was asked was in in the FTOG Discord was, hey, I want to do a automatic rail dismount and um, eject system so I can ride the rails, and I want to have a a indication that there are minecarts in the the system. And I said, oh, well, I could do that. So I came into my, my world, did a little testing. And if we load that one, uh, rails, 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 rail station. I said, okay, I could do this. Let's set this up. And let's, I need a, a block on that or the thing will fall. And I'm gonna turn on printer real quick. Make, why well, you know make. All right, so this is going through making all the bits and pieces and what's it that I need. Why are you... Uh, one of the, th the less than fun things is having to be in the right orientation. Stairs are really bad that way. Um, and now everything's in the right place except for... Check the redstone. Some weird colors there. Oh, I know why, because they don't have a charge. Here, let's toss something in. There, now they work because they have they have the redstone charge. Uh, this rail is wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the printer, uh, hide this because this needs to curve and that needs to be a power rail. All right, that is correct. Let's eject out the, <laughs> because that's wrong. Uh, let's grab the rails. Minecart. And uh, the, the, the purpose of this minecart station that just dismounted me. It sucks it into the, the dispenser over here, at which point you can push the button, bend it out, and lather, rinse, repeat. You have to push forward, but when you come back in, it gets rid of it, and the, the lamp here shows. So it was a, a very simple little purely vanilla uh, setup, and what I was able to do is once I designed this, figured out how it worked, I grabbed that schematic for it, and then I was able to post that in the Discord to say, here's how I did it. So people could look at the picture, they could also download the schematic, take a look and see all the, the, the redstone, how it was being used, and then I got a screenshot back of how that person used it in uh, the, the the nether rail station and they'd done all sorts of decoration to make it look really cool and and that's one of the things I really like about Schematica. You can take a concept and make it available for, for people to play with. It's a fun mod. 
and I hope you enjoy it as much as I do, because boy howdy, let me tell you, I love having the Schematica mod, and I have folders of different schematics of things I built over time, and things I found, and things I find that are really cool, all of them very helpful, especially later on when I'm going, I need inspiration. Let me look at some of these, let me look online, figure out what needs to be done, and use Schematica. Anyway, this has been Grok the Duck Farmer, here with a little mod spotlight for Schematica and how I use it. And thanks for watching. Bye.